So you want to learn how to integrate your Steam library with your emulated games library. Well, you've come to the right place. But before we begin, here's a list of what you'll need. Okay, so as far as things you need, you're going to need the emulator or emulators for the consoles that you want to emulate. And when you do do that, I recommend that you do configure your emulator to launch games in full screen so that you don't have to do that manually after launching it from Steam. You will also probably have to configure some controller settings if you want to use a controller. And if you do have any emulator troubles, I probably will help, but it's not really what this video is about, so I'll prioritise other people over you. Now as far as games go, I won't actually link any. However, that little URL that's in the video there, if you go there, they might be able to help. Now that you've got what you need, the first thing you need to do is go and click the link in the description and that's going to take you to this website here. So it's just a GitHub page. What you want to do is download the appropriate thing for you. So if you're on a Mac, the Steam ROM manager for Mac is the DMG here. Linux machines, it's down here, it's the Deb. But I'm on Windows, so what I would do is click the setup or the portable one depending on which one I want, whether I want it portable or not. Luckily, I don't actually have to do any of that because I've already got it just here. So what you want to do is open the Steam ROM manager. Now that's going to take you to this screen here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import my Nintendo Entertainment System games. So the first thing I need to do to get that happening is click here and type in the name of my emulator for the NES, which is Nestopia. You use whatever emulator you have. So you can see here, it's RetroArch here. So sometimes, if you're not using RetroArch, don't click Nestopia if it has RetroArch there, or anything if you don't use that. There's no emulator for me. What do you do? Well, no problem. What you do is just click, oops. Just click in the box here, scroll all the way down, and you'll see Generic. So you just want to hit that instead. So the Steam category is where we want to go next. We skip over these two. So we go here and we type in NES. So that stands for, that's the NES obviously. So that'll be the category it goes under in Steam. So next we want to find the path to the emulator. So this is what launches the emulator itself. So you click browse. Uh, my emulator is in my E drive and then I go to emulator games, I go to Nestopia and I hit select file. So now it's got the path for it there. Uh, don't worry about that switch. Don't worry about that. ROMs directory. Click that. Click where your games are. So mine are in this folder simply called NES. I like to put the games inside the folder for the emulator and that way you can sort of get to it very easily after you find the path to your NES emulator. So just select folder like so. Now the Steam Directory Global, I've already set exactly where my Steam installation is in the settings. I'm not going to click it now, but I'll show you after I do this because it'll wipe out all this stuff I've done if I click it now. So I realized after recording that I actually forgot to show the Steam Global Directory thing. So this is just me post recording now. What you need to do is you click the settings, you click the settings button up here, and then this would usually be blank, so I'm just going to do that. And now you go browse, you click your C drive, go to program files x86, and then you find Steam. Now that's if you've installed it to the default location that it will install. If you told it to install somewhere else, then it's going to be in that other location, and that means that you'll have to find it in that other location. All right, now back to the video. User accounts, you wanna type in your Steam username. Uh, users glob, don't worry about that. Image providers, don't worry about that. So now what you wanna do is just hit save on that. And now we've got a generic thing for that. So next thing we want to do is go test parser. And now we've got this here. So we're seeing the original title of the file 
and now we're seeing the final title. So just look through that, make sure it's all good. And if it looks right to you, next thing you want to do is go to the preview window and click generate app list. Now you can see here, please shut down if Steam is running there. So I forgot to close Steam before doing this, so make sure you do too. Now you can see here it's loaded all of this art here. You can see this is what it loads by default here and here. You can go through all the art in this menu here by simply using the arrows. So if you go, oh, I like that one more and I like that one more and oh, that one's cool and you can do all that sort of stuff and it's all good. You can change all that and it'll show differently in Steam. So if you're happy with how it looks, hit save app list right now. So now that you've saved the app list, what you want to do is open Steam. So all your games are in here now. Got Home Alone, Home Alone 2, yada yada yada. So I'm just going to test it and just hit play on the emulator to prove that it works. Now it will have no sound for you because I'm not recording desk... Blah. Now it will have no sound for you because I'm not recording desktop audio right now. But I can assure you right now that there is actually sound coming through. So everything just sounds perfectly fine. You can see there it launches. That's all you need. And just to show this too, if I go into big picture mode and I go to games and we go filter by categories, you can see these all have their own special art that it's imported into Steam. This is what we saw in the menu originally. I should mention actually regarding the Steam ROM manager that you can also see the posters for the games if you do that. So you see that doesn't have a poster. You can add your own poster if you want. So here's like my game art and stuff. So you can just click one of them and then you import that and it'll show it in here. And of course there's heroes so this is the banner art and of course you can show all the artwork like so and see how they all are going to look in your Steam library. So if that's all you want to do then you're all done. If you're on a GameCube or a Nintendo Wii and emulating that here's something you need to know. So over here I've got highlighted a file that is named The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker dot nkit dot iso. This won't import into the Steam ROM library properly in that it won't rename it from this name here. So when it goes into your Steam library, it gets called the Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker, .iso. Now if you want it to actually be named properly, the trick is to simply remove the .nkit and just have .iso. It doesn't actually change the file type or anything. All it does is just remove that bit and for whatever reason the Steam ROM manager likes that and it goes yep I know what that is now and it changes it accordingly. Now one last thing to note is that if you are using the emulator RPCS3 that I'm showing here right now I have not had much luck with this in terms of importing it into my Steam library like it'll just get named the region codes for the games instead of the actual names of the games and stuff. So I, I don't know what's going on there. That'll have to be up to your investigation because quite frankly, I don't run PS3 games well enough on my PC to bother finding out. All right, so that's it. Uh, remember to subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment. If you have any issues, I'll be there answering some of them or maybe all of them. There probably won't be that many comments and see you in the next one.